In this video, I traveled to New York to present my paper, A Little Bit of Money Goes a Long Way, crowdfunding on Patreon by YouTube sailing channels. You'll get to hear the whole presentation at the Eastern Economic Association conference in 2019 about this first study about the crowdfunding platform known as Patreon. Sheridan, New York Times Square. Uh, I'm going to present my paper later on today. I'm at the Eastern Economic Association here in New York in 2019. started a podcast about something that I'm interested in, in sailboat cruising, which is kind of long distance travel by a sailboat. And I uh, I was trying to think of guests that would improve the, uh, the, the, peop the amount of downloads I get for the podcast, essentially. Right, so I wanted to get the influencers in my industry, and I and so I asked people on Facebook and groups that are interested in this, you know, who are the biggest, who who do you follow the most, who are the bloggers you like the most, and much to my surprise, they did not say people that wrote things. They they mentioned people that made videos on YouTube. And up to that point, I did not really paid much attention to YouTube. Uh, but I started interviewing uh, these people, these prominent vloggers with a V, uh, and and uh, so that's how I got interested in this. And then I also was interested that I found out that some of them were making a lot of money doing it. And and so there's this there's this website called SailingChannels.com, and they actually had developed an algorithm of how to figure out who the prominent sailing bloggers are. And uh, and the, it's not just li limited to bloggers. So if you, if you look at the sample at sailingchannels.com, the time I collected it, uh, you know, number one was a blogger to an Australian couple named Sailing La Vagabond, Riley and Elena, uh, and in their boat sailing around the world. Uh, but number two was the the oldest sailboat race in the world uh, was America's Cup. Right? Uh, so, on the, in this sample of over 400 YouTube channels, uh, I used that as kind of the base sample, and then I wanted to find out uh, which who crowdfunded that who went to a crowdfunding platform called Patreon, which is the seemed to be the one that everybody in this a group of small entrepreneurs was using, and uh, then, I, then I associated those two data sets by hand. Um, so the, you know, I was really interested in the whole crowdfunding because I thought it was kind of a new area because of the Jobs Act. So the Jobs Act uh, made it easier to sell securities for small businesses, uh, but in this case, this is not security crowdfunding. Uh, this is more like donation crowdfunding, more on the, 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 which, so it's not regulated at all. It's total gifts, essentially. And uh, it's, uh, so it's similar to kind of GoFundMe, but on a recurring basis. Kickstarter, there's been a lot of work on Kickstarter, uh, which is also for creative projects. But Patreon is different because it's a recurring project. So if you have a serialized uh, content, then they, these people get paid per video uh, based on their patrons or the people that donate to their channel. Now, they also make money through um, AdSense revenues. So uh, probably a lot of people don't know this. It's obviously common knowledge, but uh, 
and YouTube is the, pretty much the only social media platform that people make money off of, right? So the creators that make the videos, um, most of them ha that have a, a decent sized channel, say over a thousand subscribers, uh, will make money off the advertising, although well, advertising revenues are really small. Uh, you know, just to give you an idea, I would say on the channel that I created, probably I had a, what I would consider based on the data, a very unsuccessful crowdfunding campaign uh, <laughs> that I don't, I don't raise nearly as much as the median or the average, uh, but uh, based on the, the channel size, uh, but uh, still Patreon was like twice what the AdSense revenue was. And uh, Patreon was started by this musician named Jack Conti who had a very successful YouTube channel, but he, he made so little money and it cost him so much to produce the videos uh, that he, he wanted to have kind of a pledge platform. And so most of the, the people on Patreon are, well, not most, but the plurality are from YouTube creators. And then there's podcasters and people that make uh, serialized comics or something like that. Uh, it's also a big uh, chunk of the the people on Patreon, but I'm only looking at people that create, uh, that are on sailingchannels.com. That means that they're YouTube creators. They're doing pretty much the same thing. Most of those channels will be vloggers, uh, but uh, not all of them. And most of them are, are making very, very similar content. Uh, okay, so most of these crowdfunders don't make very much money um over 85 percent of them make less than 100 and uh you know the 90th percentile tile of my sailingchannels.com sample of 444 uh sailing channels youtube channels that have um, have at least one subscriber and have not hidden their subscriber data um at the in January, only made thirty two dollars, and the the why I thought it was important to do the study when I did was that Patreon was changing its policy. So Patreon makes the pledges public. There's sort 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 of social proof out there, um, but they stop. They allow creators to stop making it public in January two thousand seventeen. So if I redid this study in two thousand nineteen, a lot of the pledge data would be private yeah. um, and that's up to the creator but the, the top two creators for example that I talk talk about that on patreon uh, that they've made their pledge data private although I can give you a guess that that's true. Um, so only 17 percent of the sample crowdfunded. Uh, the typical crowd funder, uh, had seven ple people pledging uh, per thousand subscriber, or the average did, uh, or five per video, and the typical person pledging uh, makes uh, $5, $5, or pledges $5 per video. So if, if, you, if you are the average, you'd make something like 35 Forty dollars per video, <laughs> uh, and uh, obviously the median's uh, not so good. Uh, and this is just of the people that have links on their YouTube channel. So if you go to a YouTube channel, I I, I tried to get the internet working, but I couldn't. You go to the the side of the YouTube channel. They got their banner up here, and then on the side they have these links. And right, so the the probit or this is testing whether or not they put a Patreon link on their banner, right? Well, it's not probate, it's, it's actually a logistic model. Um, okay, so the, one of the things is the T-test shows that there's people that crowdfund make a lot more videos, they make, about three times more videos. This is highly statistically uh, significant. Other things that are significant, obviously, 
more subscribers, bigger channels. Crowdfunders are bigger, more successful. And this becomes even more exaggerated when you look at the median crowd, uh, the median channels, right? You compare the medians of the two people that have crowdfund and those that don't, right? Once every three years, they make a video, like three or four videos a year if they don't crowdfund. If they do crowdfund, they make a video a week, right? So big jump. Uh, when you look at uh, compare the medians, uh, and here's the here's the logistic model, right? Uh, so days from last video upload is negative. That means that uh, crowd funders are producing more frequent videos, and then then I do a separate regression, just days from the last upload, right? And the only things that I found that were significant from tooling around in the data was uh, that the number of videos you have. So if you make more videos, you're more likely to make a, a more a video more frequently, right? So your days from your last upload is going to be smaller than other people. And if you have a Patreon link, but in the Patreon, so. The Patreon link is a big effect. 151 days reduces the days from the last upload if you crowdfund. Now, in general, I would say, you know, there were two channels that are making over 150,000 in 2016. Uh, and then they, if you just look at the, just look at the data here, just the, they were making, so it's 32,000 per video for the whole sample in early 2017. Uh, but those two were making more than half that. Right? They were making, or they were making something like 16,000. So this is a first study to look at uh, the crowdfunding platform. You know, what's really unique about this study that I could not find in the Kickstarter literature is there's never this uh, control group in that literature. It's always given that people are trying to crowdfund on Kickstarter, these are their characteristics. This is what we're going to show. But we never look at the group of people that are in the similar line of business and don't crowdfund, what are their characteristics, right? Uh, or how does how does their behavior change when they crowdfund? So, uh, you know, obviously I don't know how their behavior changed. It's an association. It's not, uh, it's not saying that their behavior changed or they were different before. Um, so, you know, I, I think that if you kind of look at crowdfunding only with respect to people that crowdfund, you get kind of a biased view. And, and I, I think that, that there's a lot more that can be done with uh, Patreon. Um, and I, I encourage more research on it. Uh, and I encourage you to ask questions. Can I ask something? Yeah. Um, do they have to provide the people who are uh, funding with something? Or is it just oh, like a yeah? That's a really good point. So, what do the patrons get out of it? Is it yeah. purely a donation, and they do get something out of it? So, on Patreon, you have you, the the uh, crowd funders decide reward levels, right? So, uh, you you'll have a crew level, you have a captain level, you have an admiral level, or whatever. And different crew members get different rewards, right? They might get a free T-shirt if they're admiral level. Or one of the most common rewards within this sample is that you get early access to the video, right? So you get to see their next vlog a week earlier, right? And so that they they make it, I think, an unlisted video, and and that's how they do it. So there are different levels that you can actually pay or crowdfund them like they're like i don't know uh, for example if you want to get 
A, A, B, C, for example, have access to the video, get the T-shirt, etc. You pay this amount. Right. Is that how it works? Right. Right. Oh. So, uh, you know, on my side, I, I have a lot of audio books that I produce, and so you get more audio books if you go to the higher level. Oh. Like I said, my campaign's not very successful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, thinking of uh, this thing at the firm. You're not controlling in the comparison with the specific characteristic of the uh, crowdfunder and non crowdfunder in addition to uh, are you, you sure that the, the, the funds do not uh, depend on something else? Uh, yeah, so we look at like the age, we look at yeah, I was thinking, of yeah, the years things. from founding is, is, a, is a negative, right? So the younger channels tend to crowdfund, right? Um, people Especially that, on, on the sites, uh, what, what I'm thinking is that the, the younger you are, the, the more you need the crowdfund, but the less you are visible and so the less you get. It, I don't know about the creator's age. I have the chance that when I talk about age, I talk about the channels. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. sure. Yeah. Fair enough. I was yeah. speaking about other things as well. I know you, you play on the management. No, 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 no. I was thinking about uh, the, uh, the age of the, the channel. So maybe you need uh, money earlier, but you've got the problem. You are not visible, so you cannot. Uh, no, that, that's money. not. That's definitely not how it works. Is the it's more money they make, the more so videos. Asking, you know. <laughs> so, so for instance, I mean, uh, you know, it's 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 likely that La Vagabond made in 2016 250 to 350 thousand, right? Uh, and there's a lot more channels that. Are, that are making quite a bit of money. So there's not a, there's not any evidence that people stop contributing when they start making more money. Uh, it, it's really, I would, it, and I don't have the analysis, I don't have the analysis of, uh, you know, how much you make right here. I just have whether you, you crowdfund or not. But my guess is if you did that analysis, you would find that uh, certainly the ratios are, that you, you, you get more patrons, you get more money, the bigger your audience. So it's more a function of your audience, not your need. Maybe the subject you're broadcasting. Yeah, I mean, like, like the but, from... you know, my, my failure as a crowdfunder may be the fact that I'm a finance professor married <laughs> to a physician. And they don't you're not interested in <laughs> <laughs> so. Thanks for watching and subscribe. If you want to hear the whole paper, you can hear it on the Finance Professor podcast or this video video is aimed more towards people who are thinking about starting a crowdfunding campaign on Patreon.